Hey guys, it's Lucid. Welcome back. Um, we are actually at turn 145 here in Bumble Rumble, but I've gone back to turn 142, I think, because uh, there's a kind of cool battle, which I'll show you. Um, I'm sure I've missed some things, because I am going to kind of skip around as we record to however this uh, epic saga of a game finally ends. Um, because it's just, we're not going to go click on all these battles. What I'll just do is I'll just show you a few cool things and we'll jump to my current turn. Um, so I tried to finally storm this fort again, and this is probably a few turns from between, um, well, from between when you saw me. So he, this is the gym baiting dude. That guy is to take light. Okay, it didn't really work. I don't think I cast anything. That guy should have caused a gym bait. I can't remember if you need four or three items. I thought you only needed three, but that didn't seem to work. Um, and then we have a battle inside the fort. So I just want to show you this, because it's a kind of cool battle. Um, on the Shinoyama side, there's a bunch of these dudes. These die Bakamano. And then we've got some golems, an Ankh. And we've got a couple Dione. So he went, like, all out on the defense here. Gatewayed in a ton of troops. Has his golem, has his pretender god here. And so let's see what happens. So we've got fog warriors going off. We've got darkness. Now darkness is going to help, because these guys, uh, they have dark vision 50, but... They're still going to get a stat debuffer, so I'm not going to get any. Okay, you can see our uh, demons jump to the back. Unfortunately, they're not really jumping on the heroes, they're just jumping on Chaff. Um, we've got... We kind of already went through what he's got. He's got some of these guys, which are the Phoenix Pyre Thugs. And he's got kind of a lot of them. He's got his Dione. I think he's got another Phoenix Player Thug somewhere up here. So, uh, these are, I mean, and this could work. The problem when I stormed this fort is I didn't bring an Earth Mage, so I didn't, that means I don't have Army of Gold, which means Phoenix Player Thugs will actually kill shit. Um, and I don't have Weapons of Sharpness. My Tartarian who was Earth was, uh, insane. So these guys are actually chewing their way through demons over here. Um, here we're killing most of the troops. We have a general rout on their side. But that may not matter, because he's got some berserked white mages. Um, and again, if... He's got one back here, too. Okay, he's dead. This guy... What is his reinvigoration? 14? Yeah. So now we're just chasing these guys around. We're actually taking a fair amount of damage every time they pop. Uh, and they're popping a lot. Uh, and we do have mass flight, which is one of the prerequisites for killing these guys quickly. Unfortunately, they've got, like, really high protection, so we don't really kill them that f that fast. 32 protection, um, and we do have a strength buff, so we hit for 27, but... I mean, we mostly killed them in a turn, but... We have to literally kill them every turn. Um... And the problem is, too, these guys are lifeless, so... Are not lifeless, so... Uh, he is going to benefit from... Um... Soul Vortex. So... That's kind of a problem. The other thing we don't really have is Astral Support to do, like, um... Enslave Mind, which is the other way to get these guys. They tend to get... Um, especially once they get going, they get Feeble-Minded. Which will lower their magic resistance. Oh, how are you idiots? Let's see if he has it already. Um, no. So he still has good MR, but eventually we would get it with uh, 
Enslaved Mind. We've gotten a few of these already. Anyway, I didn't have good Astral support here. It's kind of one of the problems. Um, so this is just going to go on, and because of Soul Vortex, he's not actually, we're not actually really going to kill him. And because Army of Gold, we're actually going to lose a lot of units. If I had Army of Gold, okay, if I don't get the fort, it's not a huge deal. But here I actually lose a fair amount of troops. So if we look at it, oh, well, there's actually something funny at the end. I'll just, we'll zip forward. This is when it's good to have a good computer. You can actually speed through these battles. Like trying to do. I have a laptop that I used to play on when I was at work. Or not at work, but I would travel for work. And, uh. Yeah, that laptop could not handle Dominions very well. You were, you were lucky if you got to see the battles. But on this thing, it's like, oh, you want to go at like 40 times game speed? No problem. Okay, this is the funny part. So he's been decayed because he's gotten hit by these Bane Blades. Uh, and his age right now. His age is, oh, 572 out of uh, 625. Okay, he's actually dying from the age now, I think. Because his age now... Why can't I click you? Oh. Yeah, 725 out of 625. So now he's dying every tick from decay with just the age. So it's not even hitting his HP, it's just going, you can die from just the age. It also will hit your HP too, but, so that's hilarious, but he won. So, uh, and if we look at it, um, I lost a fair amount. I lost uh, all my Fiends of Darkness. I lost Storm Demons, I lost Springhawks, I lost uh, a Tart and a Fairy Queen, uh, and I lost 50 Whites. I didn't lose a ton of Whites because they have pretty good armor, and with regen they... Even though if I had an Army of Gold or something, they'd be perfectly fine, but I didn't, so... They still did okay. You know, on his side, he lost a White Mage, um, and then all these guys, which was a fair portion of probably his standing army. Um, so anyway, his harebrained scheme to take this and then I guess do something. Anyway. We we went at length last episode about his uh, very poor general strategy. Um, now the thing about it is, is at this point in the game, it does make sense to try to prevent me from having a throne victory. Um, but he's been doing it for 80 turns, at least. So, um... And, I mean, he's not playing to win. It's not playing for him playing to win. He's just playing. He needs something to do, I think. So, it's been funny. Um, he does have funny little tactics. So, uh, we're going to move in here, and we're going to take this back. I'm going to actually... Let's see if there's something here we want to watch. They've been gym baiting me this whole time. So, what I've decided now is I'm just going to sit this army on top. And we're just going to try to steal whoever comes in gym baits. Like, here we got a Harbinger. Um, I actually got, you can see back here, where is he? I got a Seraph from sitting on top. So I think this turn we're going to, am I doing it? Yeah, we're divine naming the Seraph and then we're going to move him back on top. And we're just camp city. We're just going to camp out here and fuck you for trying to gym bait me for like, when two players try to gym bait you, especially, it is really hard. Like I, we have Lucid's thematic gym gen on, which gives us things like this so like I can always get like my earth buffs off and stuff because I have uh, this which gives you four temporary earth gems but I can't ever do mass and slave um, so we'll see um, we also we had a critical battle I guess that happens next turn we're gonna storm it this turn we'll go ahead and pull up next turn because we got a critical battle turn 43 um we are storming this, and now I think he has the first couple inside uh, the throne here. We also, who'd they send gem baiting here? Bakamano Sorcerer. This guy, we enslaved him. Um, he sent out these guys. We killed all them, enslaved them. Um, but we had a big battle up here. 
And he, I think this is a gem bait on the outside with a lich. But we have enough gems to deal with a, a single gem bait. And then we have a battle inside the fort, which is going to be interesting, because he pulls uh, his Royal Maliqui here. I mean, his uh, first couple here. So he's got the couple that uh, tell gatewayed in with a bunch of communicants. And every time they gateway, it's expensive. It's like 25 pearls. Uh, now he did... Is that my guy? That bastard stole my vampire lord. Now, uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have much of an army, and we have pretty superior troops. And he didn't actually get off. I mean, I think his mess and slave was before. Um, I would have been able to cast anti magic. But he only did it once, so I think if he was going to do it, he would have needed to have done more. And it looks like he... Let's watch this again, actually, because I think he only did... This is a different... This nation's really been in the hands of three players, and so this is player number three. Player number two was the player who... Uh, introduced everybody to... Uh, look at me, I own your army now. Um... Let's see what he does. So he does invulnerability, horde of skeletons. What the fuck? Will of Fates, army of lead, flying shield, paralyze. What the fuck? I think he did that off script. It's almost like he didn't script him. Army of lead, time stop, invulnerability, horde. Will of Fates, army of lead. Yeah, he did undead mastery. What kind of gems they learn? I don't know if he knows what this guy's supposed to be used for. Thinking about it now. I've been like really scared to go inside the fort because I would get like trip No, he's got Well this is enough to do one master and slave. What I'm guessing, this is what I'm guessing. Uh I think he's got twenty-five. He probably had thirty-two. I probably nuked the province he was in. We'll see if I did it. I bet you I nuked um, I probably nuked the province he was in with uh, flames from the sky, so he probably went with more communicants. Uh, but now he's only got a magic boost of four, which only puts him up to astral eight, which isn't enough to do master and slave. So I think what happened, I did flames from the sky, I killed some of his communicants, so he left with, like, gateway with a half kit of communicants. Not half, but, you know, he didn't have enough. And it, to be fair, he had... Um, I'm actually glad I came back and recorded this, because I definitely did not notice this at the time. I was just like, sweet, we killed this guy. But... Um, yeah, he... <laughs> he also had domes up on the province that I hit it, because this was from his throne, which has at least one dome, and I think like two or three domes up. So, we are pretty lucky to get a spell through, but it got through. No, I think it has at least two, but it may have three. Um, anyway. So, we were lucky to get a hit, but it hit, killed some of these guys. So, he teleports in, gateways in, not a full group of dudes. He's only Astral 8. Now, to cast it... Um... You need astral. Oh no, you only need to be astral eight. Shit. I thought you only needed to be astral eight, but I was like, oh, maybe you need to be nine. Army of gold. Now the thing is, is with the communion this big. The fatigue load on this guy wouldn't be bad. So if he scripted it, should have cast. I'll actually, I need to ask the player if when he lost his first couple, if, um, if he had scripted Master and Slave, because he has enough gems to do it. 
but it appears that the AI, oh no, that's what happens. Time stop, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, he still has enough. Horde of Skeletons, that looks like he's going off script. That, oh, this might be the time stop bug. There's some weird bugginess with time stop, where while you're time stopped, it doesn't actually follow your script, it does other shit. That's actually what I think. I think it... Well, I'm not sure. But my guess is that... How much fatigue? Not even that much. My guess is that that time stop fucked it now. Because he's high enough astral. Okay. So we're not sure. We're basically going to have to ask him. But it's possible the time stop bug got him. The time stop bug is if you're an innate caster and you cast time stop, uh, it does very funny things with uh, the innate casting stuff while you're off, while basically you're in the time stop bubble. And they did a patch recently where they said they fixed it, but I had heard from somebody that they didn't really fix it and I haven't tested it, which maybe I should, but I've just, I don't really think you need to, I mean, if you, like, if you're an innate caster three, you don't really need time stop. Like, you're going to be able to get as many spells off as you need. Um, maybe it's like the last part of your script you could cast it, like turn five. And then you just go blast away a bunch of random shit. Well, I don't know. Um, so anyway, watch the, the conclusion of the battle. Sorry for that long. So, yeah, Undead Mastery. So this was his kind of super weapon, which has now been thrown away. Um, and that doesn't mean we should be able to take this throne now, so... Uh, it cost us not much either. Um, now what I'm gonna do... We basically, I also gatewayed in with, uh... The Gatestone, a uh, huge fucking army. So, here's my army I gatewayed in. Shinyama is not going to be allowed to have a foothold on this portion of my land. Before you know it, I'll have bone grinding little communions coming out and trying to hit me. And plus, I. It's just offensive, the idea that he even thinks I would let him do this. Um. So, anyway, we're gonna be storming it this turn, and I think we end up taking it. I guess we'll show that. Well, there's not nothing even to show. We take it, there's no real battle. And so, two turns ahead of that is my current turn, which I just finished, and I need to submit now. Um, but basically we're casting wish- the other things- I'll, I'll walk you a little bit through- I mean, you know what we'll probably do? Um, we'll do at least one turn and it'll probably be like four- like three or four hours where I just go through and do everything. My turns don't take that long, it'll probably be like two hours. We'll just do one turn- out, two hour turn where we do it together. But, um, yeah, we're summoning a ton of shit. We- we're not quite breaking the game yet, but with number of uh, of messages you can see. Um, yeah, basically this turn we we took this fort too. So that battle that we were watching before was us taking this one, and then we took this one, and now this whole army we're going to take and we're going to roll on Pythium's cap, which we've got. Uh, <clears throat> We've had it on, off and on under siege for a while. We'll just send a golem or something on top. Um, and I've been using the horror harmonica golem. The horror harmonica I wished for from, uh, to steal it from TNG. So we are sending this at what, 205? Oh yeah, this is gonna be sneaky. So we've got this army here and we're gonna like, hey, we're sieging your thing down. He's gonna come knock it off, but we're gonna send a horror harmonica golem. Be like, fuck you, dude. So that's gonna be funny. Um, what I could do, what I shall do, I could do quickness. I think we're gonna add that to it. We're gonna do quickness retreat. 
And then, anyway, that's just gonna hopefully quicken this guy so he'll last a little longer before, oh no, he's already quickened, okay. Oh, what we could do is cheat fate won't work on an animate, okay. Anyway, hopefully he sends a big thing to kill these guys and then we catch him with the heart, or I could send the heart heart Monica Golem just directly on top of these idiots. How do I think this would work? I feel like these guys would be able to kill the horror pretty easily. The horrors are going to preferentially go for the mages. And really it's just going to turn them into whites. I'm not sure. We're going to go there. Um, on top, we have... He, the gym baits, as you can see, it's, it's kind of... It's lowered a little bit. I mean, not really. They're still doing a gym bait every turn. But... Um, anyway, he's going to keep doing it, but, um, we're going to actually, we've been sitting on top of this for probably like five turns and we're finally going to storm it. I thought I told everybody to storm. The fuck? Now this better have all my moves in it. It does. Fog Warriors, Air Elementals... Oh wait, we didn't script this guy though. Okay... So the uh, Seraph that we have has a the Aegis, which we just got off somebody who died. Uh, so that's a loot. Um, and then it's got a Spirit Helm, a Bloodthorn, some more Reinvigoration gear, um, high air magic. We're going to have him do Power of the Spheres, which is going to jump him up to Fire 5, Air 6, Astral 5. Um, and then Phoenix Pyre, which is going to jump him up to Fire, uh, fire 6, Air 6. And then he's going to do Living Fire, Living Clouds. Both those are pretty good in sieges because they'll go past. They don't care about fort walls. Um, this guy is basically going to super combatant, and then gift of flight. Now we want flight. Um, we've got a bunch of weapons of shark. We basically got everybody clustered up in the middle with holding attack orders or holding fire. And they should all get hit by Weapons of Sharpness. We're going to have Army of Gold going off on our... So, yeah, let's talk about the script for these guys. We've got... Um, okay, so the first one is uh, Power of Spheres, Army of Gold, Master and Slave, Enslave Mind, Master and Slave. So, this will go off... I think if, if we get Jim baited... I'm not sure how many times that'll go off in the real battle. It might be better just to like turn this to enslaved mind and only count on it going off once, and that might make it because it's more just to guarantee it goes off once in the real battle would be nice. Uh, we got fog warriors and then air elementals. We've got skeletal legion and then vulnerability. I don't think they actually have a lot of piercing damage, but We've got some quickenings going off. I wish I had more water gems to do that. Thunderfend and Mass Flight. Um, Anti-Magic, Will of Fates, Enslave Mind, Enslave Mind, Master and Slave. Um, so that will be nice. The Will of Fates is gonna use like five. I think we're okay. And there's a decent chance the Enslaved Minds will get one of those motherfucking gym baiters. Um, 
We've got this guy. We've got... Yeah, so this guy is basically going to do Phoenix Power, Fire Elementals, and then Living Fire. Uh, and those are going to be pretty good. He, I think his caster inside is going to be doing... Well, we can look. I'll show you what he's got inside. This was a gym bait I did on the inside, because I've been gym baiting him. So he's got his god, he's got a few tarts. I think this one he stole from me, bastard. Um, just kidding. Uh, so he's got his god. Uh, he's got a harbinger, which probably looks like fog warriors. I thought, did you have to be higher than that? I thought mass flight you can do. No, he's got a matrix, but he doesn't have many communion slaves. I'm not sure if you can actually pull off Fog Warriors. I've kind of... There, there's been a lot I haven't... He's been actually trying to defend some of this, and I just have too many different things, so... Uh, and I've been hit it every time he tries to group up an army which would be capable of fighting my army. I hit it with, like, four flames from the sky. I mean, it's not even fair or fun. I would hate being him. Um, so anyway, that's what we're fighting against, but he probably will do... Oh, we, we can watch. Because I forgot it's actually going to run through part of the script. This is probably what we're going to have to fight. Um, Gaia's Blessing. Heat from Hell. That looks like Aerofend. Yeah, Aerofend. Oh man. Oh no, he did do something. I think this is the MR one, yeah. Yeah, so he did Army of Lead or something. I wonder how fast he does. Let's see what turn he does anti-magic on. Not turn one. If it's turn two, then I'll get it as the second part of my script in the... Yeah, there's a decent chance I still almost his whole army. Because if he doesn't have anti-magic up and I have both those guys do Master and Slave with all the penetration gear, it's gonna be... gonna be gnarly. So... Uh, let's make sure we have everybody selected, because apparently I didn't get them orders to storm and I meant to. Storm Castle. Did I miss anybody important? Not really. Okay. We don't have a huge army here. We're also storming this castle. This is like Wailing Winds and some other stuff. I think I've got, yeah, Army of Gold, Weapons of Sharpness. Uh, we're storming this one. Similar deal. Uh, we're moving on top of this capital. This is the last throne I need to win. So anyway, uh, that's basically it. Turns out to be a reasonably short recording. Um, you can see we have taken this from uh, from Shinyama, and their dreams of having a, a colony over here have uh, been diminished. Um, meanwhile, what's going on in the world? Um, TNC is pushing up in Vanarus towards this throne. Um, and then once he has that, in terms of the throne count, um, right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and you need eight to one, so I need two more. Uh, he has one, two, three, four. He has four, so he needs uh, eight or four more. So if he gets this one, he's going to then have to get both of Pythium's thrones. So I'm way ahead of him. All I have to do is just get this one, which has a big army on it, but guys, even with domes up, um, pretty good chance I'm gonna burn this one to the fucking ground with flames from the sky uh, And then I'll just move an army in and take it. Um, so that is the plan um, And I've got Just a phenomenal this is all blood hunting and then I've got uh, whites and uh, fiends of darkness and storm demons just a gnarly Gnarly, gnarly little army. Is this guy doing darkness? He better. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that's what's going on. 
Hope y'all are enjoying the series, and uh, hopefully I can bring this one in uh, to a landing. <sighs> All right, and thanks to everybody in the game for playing. I know it's like turn 145. We've had to get actually remarkably few subs. Uh, Shinyama, who I've talked just huge amounts of shit about, uh, he stayed chipper and reminding people about uh, finishing their turns and never asked for a sub, never complained. So, uh, anyway, special thanks to, uh, to you, Shinyama, uh, for staying and, and playing. And uh, I think Sack's still having fun, who's uh, TNG, who's huge. Uh, and he could definitely still win. Uh, Pythium's had to sub out, but um, the subs have been awesome. Uh, one of the subs played for like 50 turns and then kind of had had other things they had to do. But if you if you can sub for 50 turns, that's you're still doing a favor to everybody. Uh, and then Vanarus is just uh, is also a sub actually, but uh, which is you know it's not terribly surprising. The smaller kind of nations have gotten subs as the game goes along because. You know, there's a pretty low chance of winning, and it's a pretty big time commitment at turn 145. Um, anyway, special thanks to everybody for still playing, and uh, I wish I could have gotten a, a win sooner, but I just haven't been able to manage it. I tried even throne rushing this one, and it just failed, so I've had to just take all the infrastructure around it, slow take it, siege it. Wait for the gem baits, because I can't. I basically can't cast hardly any spells on the inside, and my army gets stolen. Um, if I if I was trying to go in earlier, but uh, that threat's been eliminated, so we're gonna go on this, and then we're gonna go on this. Hopefully, we don't tell T and Chi that nobody knows yet. I haven't said anything about Pythium losing their first couple, so if T and Chi is scared of it, that's actually good for me. Anyway, guys, uh, hope y'all are enjoying. Uh, see you next time.